Ladies and gentlemen, the Alabama Senate will now come to order. Our prayer today will be delivered by Senator Dan Roberts. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's pray. Father, we are here again today, and we ask that you would lead, guide, and direct us as we serve our state, that you would give us wisdom, that you would cause us to accomplish your good and perfect will in what we do. We thank you for the men and women who serve us to allow us to function, and we're grateful for this day. We thank you again for Easter, and we commit this time to you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Senator Roberts. Today, the pledge will be led by Jordan Scott, eighth grade student at Prattville Junior High School. Jordan is the guest of Senator Chambliss. Attention, salute, pledge. Thank you, uh, Jordan. And uh, while Jordan's walking off, I want to recognize some special guests in the gallery, Councilman Marcus Jackson of Prattville and Jordan Scott's family. If y'all could please stand. Welcome to Alabama Senate. All right, Secretary, call the roll. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Bell. Mr. Butler. Mr. Carnley. Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Chastine, Ms. Coleman, Ms. Coleman Madison, Mr. Elliott, Ms. Figures, Mr. Gavan, Mr. Gudger, Mr. Hatcher, Mr. Hovey, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kitchens, Mr. Livingston, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shellnut, Mr. Singleton, Mr. Smitherman, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Stutz, Mr. Wagner, Ms. Weaver, Mr. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 22 senators present, which is a quorum. The Senate is ready to transact business. Mr. President. Senator Wagner. Move that we excuse absent senators. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. President. Senator Wagner. Move that we dispense with the reading of the journal from the previous legislative day and that we adopt said journal. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. I now like to recognize some special guests in the gallery. Uh, Alabama Arise, they have 250 members here for Arise Lobby Day. If you're a member of that organization, if you could please stand. All right, welcome to Alabama Senate. All right, Senator Reed. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we set aside sunset for a special order calendar. All right, um, Secretary, call the uh, long roll. Mr. Albritton, Mr. Allen, Mr. Barfoot, Mr. Beasley, Mr. Bell, Mr. Butler, Mr. Carnley, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Chastine, Ms. Coleman, Ms. Coleman Madison, Mr. Elliott, Ms. Figures, Mr. Gavan, Mr. Gudger, Mr. Hatcher, Mr. Hovey, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kitchens, Mr. Livingston, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shellnut, Mr. Singleton, 
Mr. Smithman. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Ms. Weaver. Mr. Williams. Twenty-five eyes, zero nays. The uh, motion passes. All right, Senator Wagner. Mr. President, I have a report from the committee on rules. All right, Secretary Reed, receive the report from the committee on rules. From the Committee on Rules, Senate Resolution Number 42, Special Order Calendar. Be it resolved by the Senate of the Legislature of Alabama that immediately upon the adoption of this resolution, the following business in the order set forth below shall be the special and paramount order of business for the 18th legislative day, taking precedence over the regular order of business or any pending or unfinished business. Introduction of bills, house messages, reports from standing committees, motions and resolutions. On page 48, Senate Bill 206 by Senator Jones relating to public schools. On page 49, Senate Bill 209 by Senator Jones relating to the National Guard and Reserve. On page 24, Senate Bill number 210 by Senator Smitherman relating to juveniles. On page 24, Senate Bill 211 by Senator Chastain relating to public education. On page 41, Senate Bill 29 by Senator Shelnut creating the Alabama Farm Center. On page three, Senate Bill 98 by Senator Orr, relating to public school security. On page 47, Senate Bill number 200, relating to the Board of Nursing. On page 32, Senate Bill 104 by Senator Carnley, relating to civil practice. On page eight, Senate Bill 116 by Senator Gavan, relating to the Alabama On-Site Waste Water Board. On page nine, Senate Bill 123 by Senator Kelly, relating to the State Board of Auctioneers. On page five, Senate Bill 125 by Senator Stewart and Coleman Madison, regarding the State Board of Public Accountancy. On page six, Senate Bill 132 by Senator Barfoot, relating to the Alabama Board of Social Work Examiners. On page seven, Senate Bill 133 by Senator Barfoot, relating to the Alabama Security Commission. On page 10, Senate Bill 138 by Senator Gudger regarding the Plumbers and Gas Fitters Examining Board. And on page 8, Senate Bill 147 by Senator Colvin Madison relating to the Public Service Commission. M Mr. President. Senator Wagner. Move that we adopt the report from the Committee on Rules using the uh, short roll call. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Williams. 25 ayes, zero nays, uh, special order calendars adopted. Now move on to introduction of bills. And a reminder, we're on a special order calendar on introduction of bills, so we can't do it throughout the day. So if you have any bills that need to be introduced, we have to take them now. Senate Bill number 260 by Senator Chambliss relating to tax lien auctions and sales is referred to the Committee on County and Municipal Government. Mr. President. Senator. I request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to tax lien auctions and sales to amend sections 4010-182, 4010-183, 4010-184, 4010-186, 4010-187, 4010-191, 4010-193, .10 .10 and 4010-200, Code of Alabama, to add section 4010-202 to Code of Alabama 1975 to further provide for times a public auction may be held, to further provide for fees, to provide for the purchase price of a tax lien if a holder of a tax lien certificate fails to purchase a subsequent tax lien, to provide for the transfer of the tax lien and rights of the purchaser, to further provide for who may redeem a tax lien that has been auctioned or sold, to further provide for a title report for use in a foreclosure and quiet title action to prohibit a holder of a tax lien certificate from entering upon or processing any property until a deed is received, to prevent a holder of a tax lien certificate from being criminally or civilly liable for violations in certain circumstances, and to provide that certain books and records are prima facie evidence in certain circumstances.
Senate Bill number 261 by Senator Jones proposing a constitutional amendment relating to Cherokee County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation. Mr. President, that's for the title to be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. To propose an amendment to the Constitution of Alabama of 2022 relating to Cherokee County to authorize the legislature to fix and regulate court costs by general or local law and to ratify all previously collected court costs. Senate Bill number 262 by Senator Jones. A proposed constitutional amendment relating to Etowah County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation. Mr. President, <coughs> request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. To propose an amendment to the Constitution of Alabama of 2022 relating to Etowah County to amend Section 28.2.00, Constitution of Alabama 2022, to authorize the legislature to fix and regulate court costs by general or local law and to ratify all previously collected court costs. Senate Bill number 263 by Senator Jones relating to Etowah County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation with notice and proof. Mr. President. Senator. Request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to Etowah County to further provide for service of process and to provide for the collection and dispensation of fees associated with service of process. Senate Bill number 264 by Senator Orr relating to solid waste is referred to the Committee on Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Development. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to solid waste to amend section 22272, Code of Alabama 1975, to provide definitions and to provide that recovered materials processing facilities are deemed manufacturing facilities for purposes of the Solid Waste and Recyclable Materials Management Act. All right. I'd like to recognize a special guest in the gallery, um, guest of Senator Elliott. When I call your name, if you could please stand, Councilman, Councilman Jack Burrell of Fairhope and uh, Dr. Rod Grissett. If y'all could please stand. Welcome to Alabama Senate. Senate Bill number 265 by Senator Coleman Madison relating to juvenile courts is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation General Fund. Mr. President, Senator, request, request the title be read. Secretary, read the title. Senator, I, I you know, forgot about those words over the break. It's good to hear them again. Read the title. <laughs> All right. Secretary, read the title. Relating to juvenile courts to amend sections 1215-208, 1215-215, Code of Alabama 1975, to require the Department of Youth Services to reimburse a county detention facility for housing a child once the child has been ordered to the custody of the Department of Youth Services, and to make non-substantive technical revisions to update the existing code language to current style. Relating to juvenile courts to amend section 1215-208, and 1215-215, Code of Alabama, to require the Department of Youth Services to reimburse a county detention facility for housing a child once the child has been ordered to the custody of the Department of Youth Services. Senate Bill 266 by Senator Livingston and others. Relating to motor vehicles is referred to the Committee on Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Development. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to motor vehicles to amend section 32920, Code of Alabama 1975, to further provide for terms used in enforcing prohibitions on the maximum weights of vehicles and to make non-substantive technical revisions to update the existing code language and hierarchy to current style. Senate Bill number 267 by Senator Kitchens relating to Marshall County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation with notice and proof. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. 
relating to Marshall County to specify those employees of the Sheriff's Office who are required to complete certain training and continuing education requirements. Senate Bill number 268 by Senator Williams relating to Mobile County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation in Mobile County with notice and proof. Senate Bill number 269 by Senator Williams relating to the city of Sims in Mobile County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation Mobile County with notice and proof. Senate Bill number 270 by Senator Orr relating to public records is referred to the Committee on County and Municipal Government. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to public records to amend section 361240 and 361241 Code of Alabama and to add sections 361243, 361244, and 361245 to the Code of Alabama 1975 to establish procedures for requesting and obtaining public records and to make non-substantive technical revisions to update the existing code language to the current style. Senate Bill number 271 by Senator Shelnut relating to religious persecution is referred to the Committee on State Governmental Affairs. Senate Bill number 272 by Senator Albritton relating to the Alabama Renovation Finance Authority is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation at General Fund. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. To amend provisions of Act Number 90-602, enacted at the 1990 regular session of the Legislature of Alabama, codified as Sections 4110-458 and 4110-461, Code of Alabama 1975, to allow the Alabama Building Renovation Finance Authority to issue bonds in an amount not to exceed $50 million for authorized projects allowed under Section 4010-456, Code of Alabama 1975, and to clarify certain provisions related to the sale of bonds by the authority. Senate Bill number 273 by Senator Sessions relating to the simplified seller's use tax is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation Education. Mr. President, request the title be read. Secretary, read the title. Relating to the simplified seller's use tax to amend section 4023-197 of the Code of Alabama 1975 to provide that the ratio for the distribution of the net proceeds distributed to municipalities would be adjusted to include increases in population as a result of annexations. Senate Bill number 274 by Senator Jones and others relating to the state auditor is referred to the Committee on Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Development. Mr. President, we request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to the state auditor to amend sections 36.16.1, 36.16.3, 36.16.6, 36.16.8, 36.16.10, 10, and 36.16.11 of the Code of Alabama to add sections 36.16.1.1 to the Code of Alabama 1975 to provide further for the duties and authorities of the state auditor to create a division of investigations within the office of the state auditor and authorize the division to carry out certain investigations and make referrals to the attorney general or district attorneys to authorize the attorney general to bring civil actions to recover amounts in certain circumstances, to update the code to reflect changes in practices and powers granted to the state auditor, and to make non-substantive technical revisions to update the existing code language to current style. Senate Bill number 275 by Senator Melson relating to agricultural authorities is referred to the Committee on Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Agriculture. 
To amend sections 11, 20, 73, last admitted back 2023, 232, 2023 regular session, Code of Alabama 1975, relating to agriculture authorities organized by a county under section 11, 20, 70 of the Code of Alabama 1975 to further specify the power of an authority to develop commercial facilities and to use the revenue generated to support the authority's mission. Senate Bill number 276 by Senator Sessions and Melson. Relating to medical cannabis is referred to the Committee on Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to medical cannabis, to amend sections 22A63, 22A64, and 22A67, Code of Alabama 1975, to require the Alabama Medical Cannabis Commission to issue an increased number of licenses to eligible applicants and to provide certain requirements and guidelines related to the licensure of certain applicants, to add sections 22A67.1 and 22A67.2 to the Code of Alabama 1975, to provide for an administrative adjudic adjudicatory process for recommendation of the awarding of available license to certain applicants and to provide for an appeals process to challenge the final orders of the commission regarding the licensure of certain applicants. Senate bill number 277. Relating to competitive bid contracts is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation Education by Senator Kitchens. President, request the title be read. Secretary, read the title. To amend sections 414161, 414164, 41682, 41683, 41685, and 41687, Code of Alabama 1975, to provide further for the procedures for protesting certain competitive bid contracts. Senate Bill number 278 by Senator Gavan and others relating to public education is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation Education. Mr. President, request the title be read. All right, Secretary, read the title. Relating to public education to amend section 16118.1 as last amended by Act 2023-352-2023 regular session, Code of Alabama 1975 to add chapter 1A to title 16 of the Code of Alabama 1975, creating the Public Education Employee Injury Compensation Program, the Public Education Employee Injury Compensation Trust Fund, and the Public Education Employee Injury Compensation Board, and to provide compensation to full-time public education employees who are injured on the job. All right, uh, before we move on to the next thing, I want to recognize some special guests in the gallery. Uh, the guest of Senator Singleton, when I call your name, if you could please stand. Uh, District 2, West Alabama, uh, the Alabama School Board Association. If y'all could please stand. Welcome to Alabama Senate. All right, now move on to House messages. Secretary, call the first House message. Message from the House. Mr. President, the House Representatives has originated and passed the following engrossed House bill in order to same sent forthwith to the Senate. House Bill number 267 by Representative Moore, P., and Lipscomb relating to the Board of Examiners of Landscape Architects is referred to the Committee on County and Municipal Government. Signed, John Treadwell Clerk. Message from the House, Mr. President, the House of Representatives has originated and passed the following engrossed House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate. House Bill 172 by Representative Chestnut and others relating to elections is referred to the Judiciary Committee. Signed, John Treadwell Clerk. 
Message from the House, Mr. President, the House of Representatives has originated and passed the following engrossed House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate. House bill number 201 by Representatives Klaus and Reynolds relating to the retirement systems of Alabama is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation General Fund. Signed, John Treadwell Clerk. Message from the House. Mr. President, the House of Representatives has originated and passed the following engrossed House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate. House bill number 287 by Representative Hassel with notice and proof relating to Montgomery County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation. Signed, John Treadwell, Clerk. Message from the House. Mr. President, the House of Representatives originated and passed the following engrossed House bill and ordered same set forthwith to the Senate. House bill number 309 by Representative Shaver relating to state employees is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation General Fund. Signed, John Treadwell, Clerk. Message from the House. Mr. President, the House of Representatives has originated and passed the following House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate without engrossment. House bill number 233 by Representative Sorrells and others relating to motor vehicles is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Energy. Signed, John Treadwell, Clerk. Transportation and Energy. Message from the House, Mr. President. The House of Representatives has originated and passed the following House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate without engrossment. House bill number 204 by Representative Faulkner relating to the Birmingham Host Committee World Police and Fire Games is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation Education. Signed, John Treadwell, Clerk. Message from the House, Mr. President. The House of Representatives originated and passed the following House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate without engrossment. House bill number 256 by Representative Ellis relating to extradition is referred to the Committee on Finance and Taxation General Fund. Signed, John Treadwell, Clerk. Message from the House, Mr. President, the House of Representatives has originated and passed the following House bill and ordered same sent forthwith to the Senate without engrossment. House bill number 288 by Representative Hassel with notice and proof relating to Montgomery County is referred to the Committee on Local Legislation. Signed, John Treadwell, Clerk. Mr. Mr. President, I have a point of order. All right. I, I, and, uh, I know the introduction of bills that we get an, an opportunity to you know, have the titles read. What is the difference uh, in that and these House messages? Because for us, for us in the Senate, let me finish, for us in the Senate, it's the introduction of the bill. It's, it's, so can we have a title read? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure. That was all, you know. Uh, I, I'm not finna ask right now. I just wanted to know the point of order. Thank you very much. All right, does that conclude House messages? All right, now move on to uh, committee reports. And then uh, Senator Gudger. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to recommit this bill out of Fred, please, sir. All right, all those in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? All right. Chris. Senate Bill number 259 by Senator Singleton has been re-referred to the Tourism Committee. From the Committee on County and Municipal Government, Senate Bill number 224 receives a favorable report with one amendment by a vote of five ayes and four nays. Mr. President. Could I request the title be read? Yes, yeah, Secretary, read the title. Let me find it. Yeah. I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I, I 
to establish the Office of Occupational and Professional Licensing with the Department of Labor, to add Chapter 2B of Title 25, Code of Alabama, 1975, to provide for the leadership, support, and oversight of certain occupational and professional licensing boards, to provide for an executive director, deputy directors, and the employment of staff for the boards, to provide uniform standards for fees, to continue existing licensing and rules, to provide for the transfer of the following boards commencing on October 1. 2025, the Board of Examiners of Assisted Living Administrators, Alabama Athletic Commission, Alabama Board of Athletic Trainers, State Board of Auctioneers, Alabama Professional Bail Bonding Board, Alabama Behavior Analyst Licensing Board, Board of Examiners and Counseling, Alabama Board of Electrical Contractors, Alabama Electronic Security Board of Licensure, State Board of Genetic Counseling, Alabama Board of Licensure for Professional Geologists, Board of Home Medical Equipment, Alabama Board for Registered Interior Designers, Alabama Licensure Board for interpreters and transliterators, Alabama Board of Examiners of Landscape Architects, Alabama Board of Examiners in Marriage and Family Therapy, Alabama Massage Therapy Licensing Board, State Board of Midwifery, Alabama Board of Optometry, Alabama Private Investigation Board, State Board of Podiatry, Alabama State Board of Prosthetists and Orthotists, and the Alabama Security Regulatory Board by amending sections of the Code of Alabama 1975 in Chapter 2A, Title 34, Chapter 9, Title 41, Chapter 40, Title 34, Chapter 4, Title 34, Chapter 13, Title 15, Chapter 5A, Title 34, Chapter 8A, Title 34, Chapter 36, Title 34, Chapter 1A, Title 34, Chapter 13A, Title 34, Chapter 41, Title 34, Chapter 14C, Title 34, Chapter 15C, Title 34, Chapter 16, Title 34, Chapter 17, Chapter 17A, Title 34, adding Chapter 43A, Title 34, amending in Chapter 19, Title 34, Chapter 22, Title 34, Chapter 24, Title 34, Chapter 25B, Title 34, Chapter 25A, Title 34, and Chapter 27C, Title 34, to provide for the transfer of the following boards commencing on October 1, 2026. The State Board for Registration of Architects, Alabama Board of Court Reporting, State Board of Examiners for Dietetics, Diet Dietetics Nutrition Practice, State Board of Examiners for Dietetics Nutrition Practice, State Board of Registration for Foresters, Board of Hearing Instrument Dealers, Board of Examiners of Nursing Home Administrators, Alabama State Board of Occupational Therapy, Alabama On-Site Wastewater Board, Board of Physical Therapy, Polygraph Examiners Board, Alabama Board of Examiners in Psychology, Alabama State Board of Respiratory Therapy, Alabama Board of Social Work Examiners, and Alabama Board of Examiners for Speech Language Pathology and Audiology Board by amending sections of the Code of Alabama 1975 in Chapter 2, Title 34, Chapter 8B, Title 34, Chapter 34, Title 34, Chapter 34A, Title 34, Chapter 2A, Title 34, Chapter 14, Title 34, Chapter 20, Title 34, Chapter 39, Title 34, Chapter 21A, Title 34, Chapter 24, Title 34, and Chapter 25, Title 34, Chapter 26, Title 34, Chapter 27B, Title 34, Chapter 30, Title 34, and by amending sections in chapter, chapter 28A, Title 34, to amend Section 2210B3 to transfer the Sickle Cell Oversight and Regulatory Commission to the Department of Public Health and to amend Section 2230D8, Code of Alabama, to transfer the Alabama Dry Cleaning Environmental Response Trust Fund Advisory Board to the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, to repeal Section 34. 453, 3412, 32, 3417, 25, 3424, 253, 3430, 54, 3436, and 3447, Code of Alabama, relating to member compensation and fees and to repeal Chapter 43, Title 34, Code of Alabama, providing for the Alabama Board of Massage Therapy and to provide for various effective dates. This bill has received a second read to be placed on the calendar for next legislative day. Secretary, call the next committee. All right, that concludes committee reports. I now move on to uh, motions and resolutions. All right, Senator Coleman, Madison. Senator Coleman, Madison. Thank you, Ms. Chair. I'd like to offer this um, 
uh, SR mourning the death and celebrating the life of Father Robert Crossmeyer. All right, Secretary, I read and receive. Uh, it's an SR and SJR. It's just an SR. SR. Okay. We're good to go. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Colwell Madison. Any other motions or resolutions? Senator Wagner, you have any? Okay. Mr. President. Senator Wagner. I have two resolutions from rules. All right, uh, Secretary, read and receive the uh, resolution from rules, please. From the Committee on Rules, House Joint Resolution number 85, encouraging state entities to hire and advance individuals with disabilities, receives a favorable report. Mr. President. Senator Wagner. Move adoption of the resolution. All right, all those. Mr. President. I'm sorry. Have a request for it to be read. All right, Secretary, uh, read the uh, resolution. Read all the good stuff. Whereas Alabama is home to 800,000 working age Alabamians with disabilities, whereas employment provides opportunities for individuals with disabilities to be financially independent, demonstrate their skills and abilities, and access the full benefits of our community, and whereas the employment rate of individuals with disabilities continues to remain unacceptably lower than individuals without disabilities, 38.1% of Alabamians with disabilities between 21 and 64 years of age were employed in 2022, compared to 78.1% of their peers living without a disability. The percentage of the individuals with disabilities living in poverty is typically more than double that of their peers living without a disability. And whereas the legislature is strongly committed to encouraging and supporting individuals with disabilities to participate in the social and economic life of Alabama and engage in competitive, integrated employment, and whereas the state of Alabama has a responsibility to ensure that individuals with disabilities have access to employment opportunities in public service, now therefore be it resolved by the legislature of Alabama, both houses thereof concurring, that each state agency, department, board, and commission is is encouraged to hire and advance individuals with disabilities. Each state agency, department, board, and commission is encouraged to use the best efforts with respect to the recruitment, hiring, and advancement of individuals with disabilities and review its hiring practices to identify any barriers to employment of individuals with disabilities and take appropriate action to eliminate any non-job related barriers to the integration of individuals with disabilities into the workforce. Each state agency, department, board, and commission shall be provided a copy of this resolution upon its passage. Is that, all right. Mr. Uh, President. Senator Wagner. Move adoption of the resolution. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution's adopted. All right. The Secretary read and receive the second resolution. From the Committee on Rules, Senate, Res Senate Joint Resolution, number 24, by Senator, Senator Livingston, establishing... The Alabama-Ireland Trade Commission receives a favorable report. Mr. President. Senator Wagner. Move adoption of the resolution. Mr. Right. President, request for it to be read. All right, Secretary, read the resolution. Whereas the contributions of Ireland to our civilization have been enormous through her missionaries and scholars, her achievements in science, literature, the arts, entrepreneurship, and music, and not least in the backbreaking labor borne by her sons and daughters without number who helped build our nation, all of which are the achievements of a people who were only officially joined the family of nations 100 years ago. Whereas generations of Irish Alabamians and their descendants have left a lasting mark on our state and its heritage, such as pioneering educator Margaret Murray Washington, faithful witness Reverend James Coyle, and Heisman Trophy winner Pat Sullivan. And whereas our respective economies increasingly diversify in the global economy, both the state of Alabama and the Republic of Ireland now participate in the global economy, with the value of Alabama's exports to Ireland increasing nearly 75% in 2021 and 2022 alone. While Irish companies such as James Hardy and CHR are investing directly in Alabama and its workers, we believe that our economic and cultural relationship with Ireland should no longer be taken for granted. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the legislature of Alabama, both houses thereof concurring, that the Alabama-Ireland Trade Commission is created to foster closer ties of friendship between the state of Alabama and the Republic of Ireland. A, the Alabama-Ireland Trade Commission shall be comprised of the following members. 
One, a majority member and minority member of the Senate to be appointed by the President pro tem of the Senate with preference to be given to any senator who is a member of the American Irish State Legislators Caucus or a sponsor of this resolution. Two, a majority member and a minority and a minority member of the House of Representatives to be appointed by the Speaker of the House of Representatives with preference to be given to any representative who is a member of the American Irish State Legislators Caucus or a sponsor of this resolution. Three, the Chair of the Senate Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Development Committee or his or her designee Four, the Chair of the House of Representatives Economic Development and Tourism Committee, or his or her designee. Five, the Commissioner of Agriculture and Industries, or his or her designee. Six, the Secretary of Commerce, or his or her designee. The Director of the Alabama Port Authority, or his or her designee. Eight, an individual recognized for his or her private sector experience in international trade and exports to be appointed by the Governor. An individual who is active in a Irish American cultural and civic affairs and who has a history of cooperation in the legislative process to be appointed by the lieutenant governor. The it, two individuals from public higher education who have experience or professional or academic interest in Alabama-Ireland trade relations to be appointed respectively by the chancellor of the University of Alabama system and the president of Auburn University. 11, the president of the Business Council of Alabama or his or her designee. 12, the Alabama State Director of the National Federation of Independent Business or his or her designee. Up to 11 individuals active in international trade or business, economic development, and cultural exchange to be appointed by the government of Ireland. The appointing authorities on behalf of the state of Alabama shall coordinate their appointments to assure the study commission membership is inclusive and reflects the racial, gender, geographic, urban, rural, and economic diversity of the state. The president pro tem of the Senate shall call the first meeting of the commission to be held at a date no later than September 20th, 2024, at which the members shall elect a chair from among the legislative membership and assign study and reporting responsibilities to members. The legislative members of the commission shall be entitled to their legislative compensation per diem and travel expenses for each day they attend a meeting of the commission pursuant to section 49 of the Constitution. The non-legislative members of the commission from the state of Alabama shall serve without compensation but may be in re reimbursed for necessary expenses in attending commission meetings pursuant to the policies of the respective appointing authority. The commission shall meet as necessary to conduct its business. A quorum for meetings shall be 14 members. After the first meeting, the commission may meet by electronic means. The purpose of the commission shall be to accomplish the following. Advance bilateral trade and investment between the state and the Republic of Ireland. Encourage mutual investment in the state of Alabama and the Republic of Ireland, especially in infrastructure and human capital. Promote sustained business, educational, and cultural exchanges and policy issues of mutual benefit between the state of Alabama and the Republic of Ireland. The Commission shall annually report to the Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker of the House, and the Secretary of Commerce no later than the third day of the regular session of the Legislature on the number of times it met during the preceding 12 months, and shall include minutes of its meetings with any interim and recommendations or requests that may assist in its work. Pursuant to Section 3614.17.1, Code of Alabama, the Commission shall provide to the Secretary of State a notice of all meetings, the name of each member serving on the Commission, and a copy of all reports and written recommendations produced throughout the duration of the Commission. The Senate and the Legislative Services Agency shall provide administrative and professional services as needed to the Commission. Be it further resolved that upon enactment of this resolution, the President pro tem of the Senate shall transmit a copy of this resolution to Senator Mark Daly, Sinad Iran, Ms. Komen Chonchur, Consul General of Ireland in Atlanta, Mr. Leo Clancy, Chief Executive Officer of Enterprise Ireland, and Mr. Michael Lohan, Chief Executive Officer of IDA Ireland. Mr. President. Senator Wagner. Move adoption of the resolution. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolutions adopted. All right, any other motions or resolutions? All right, Secretary, call the first bill. On page 48 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 206 by Senator Jones and others relating to public schools, BR pending. Mr. President. Senator Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of the BIR. Uh, 
We need to establish a role, I gather. We have a previous role. Mr. President. I was wondering if you were paying attention. That, I yeah. was. All right. I was. I want you to know that. I was just, I just, just like when you be talking to me, I asked you if you know that I stopped and folk be, I just turned my back to him uh, and see the majority leader was talking to me, you know. He was doing his job, so I had to pay attention, you know, so that's what that was. Did you uh, want to speak on the BIR? Yes, sir, I do. You're recognized. Okay, thank you. Uh, let, let me say this to everyone in here. I, I, did, how many, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of y'all went downstairs? To the, I saw some of y'all down there, that's why I'm saying that. And I, I think that, that uh, we're fortunate to have the people we have in the military here. We're fortunate to have the kind of leadership that we have with those people in those positions. And at the same time, I think that uh, it's a blessing to what, how we have embraced them here and the things that we have been working to try to get done for them. You know, Senator, I, I, I heard the, you were, you were downstairs, wasn't you? I think you, yeah, yeah, you spoke. What a, oh, that's right. What I mean, don't you were downstairs, you spoke. You did a good job. I'm gonna give it that grades, you know. Yeah, and you, you How did get, I do? You get A plus. Thank you. I'll, you, I'll take that any day. You did, because you were smooth. You didn't, You weren't like just reading off no papers. You were just kind of going through and you were letting that stuff come up. You know what I mean? Versus trying to press it up. And you, you did a good job, man. Good I've been job. learning from some of the best oh, listen, by watching up here. You know, listen, I see why you got elected. <laughs> I see why you got elected. But but I was I was commenting because if you remember, and I think it was one of the generals, that his uh he said his daughter uh uh operated the boom. You remember that? I do. And you remember he said he was a navigator. Okay? And and uh oh I tell you how much time do we have? Nine minutes. I can only tell you one story in the nine minutes, and then when we get on the bill, I'll tell you the other story, okay? But it, it's not going to take very long to tell these stories, okay? But but uh, the guy that was, that was navigated, no, you know, he said he was a navigator all those years. And I'll I tell you a little story. I had an opportunity, and let me just say this. The, what's the number, the 54th wing, the refueling, the one in Birmingham. What's the, what's the number of that? I believe it's the 117th. I mean, I'll find out for you. Okay. The, the, uh, I had an opportunity to, uh, with that wing to, to go over, you know, across the water to, twice, two or three times in my tenure here being in the legislature. And one of the t t tenures that we had to go through, we flew over to, uh, let me see. It, it is the 117, Senator. 117. Let me see. I want to make sure I get this straight. Because, you know, it was several times going, you know, the countries are different. I think we flew into to England, and then we had to go to Romania, and then I think we went to Belgium. And when we, when we went to uh, uh, Romania, I, you know, we, they, 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 they parked the airplane, and of course, you know, the military come around for security purposes, and they transported us to the embassy on, on the buses. And so I was, I, 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 I will tell you the true story now. I got to, you, you got to go believe it, but I will tell it to you. And so we were riding through the communities and I was looking out the window. And you know, you have these armed security people on the bus and they surrounding you, trailing you, make sure that nothing happens. And so I asked the man, I said, you know, they can't talk much to you, you know, they don't do this. But I asked him, I said, where are the dogs? I said, I don't see no dogs running around in the neighborhood. And then the man, he didn't smile, he sat right there, had this, you know, had this, I don't know what kind of gun, it was one of them big ones. He said, and this is all that he said to me. He said, you will see dog. That's all he said to me. 
And so I said, okay. So when we went to the embassy, I would say probably is, I know I'm exaggerating now, I'm exaggerating. But the hallway, this particular hallway in the embassy in Romania, or either we was in the palace one, was about as wide as this building, all the way down. And they had a buffet kind of thing, all kind of food you can think of. Oh no, I know where this uh, is. I, you know where it's going. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm going down there looking at the foods and they had this, these, this big table with nothing but just different meats on it. And, this, and the man that was on the bus was standing over there on a post, security post, and he saw me. And this is what he said to me. <laughs> yep, you know what I'm gonna say. I was standing by the table. This is what he said, he said, here is dog. <laughs> I said, what? He said, dog. I mean, they had cooked the dog. Yes, yes, yes. I couldn't believe it. So you, you know what my next question is gonna be. What's that? Did you or did you not? No, I did not. <laughs> ain't no way, I ain't no way. Uh-uh. I, I grew up with too many pets and stuff and still got one. I got a Yorkie, you know, so I, I no, I, I love animals too much. Uh-uh. But one thing I found out too, you know how we talk about delicate and fine eating is like caviar. Well, the delicate eating of the, you know, like expensive upper crest eating there was the, was the cushion that's in the inside of the foot of the chicken, uh, or, or the rooster, one of the two of them. That was a delicacy. They made a broth out of it. I didn't want to believe that, out of the inside part of the chicken, you know. Now, I haven't told you that the military part this not that this. We, when we were going across the English Channel, you know how long it takes to get across there, what, 26 hours or 16 hours or 12, whatever it was, across this water. We had these two, we were on these big old, the big ones, the refueler. We had these, while we was on there, I told them that I said, I want to be in the action. And so what they did was, they trained me how to operate the boom. Same thing that lady, is the military man's daughter does. So I, they told me, they said, get ready. I said, you got a, an assignment. And so they were, I went down there with one of the you know, officers and I had gone through the little, the, little quick, tra quick training little session. So you had to go down under the plane. You, you know, you own the plane, but you go down and you're not outside the plane. And it's fiberglass there, you can see. And you have to lay on your back and you operate these mechanical things. And, and when they tell you to get ready, out of nowhere, out of the clear blue sky, two airplanes, you flying now over the English Channel. Two airplanes come from somewhere and sit on your wings. You flying, these are two planes, mm -hmm. like fighter planes. They're sitting on the wings. And then you get the boom and you gotta bring it around front because that tip on the front of that plane is where you put the fuel in those fighters. And so you, I had to bring it up and they had to lock it in. And I was, this how close I was to the men in the plane. They were in fiberglass and this is fiberglass. I'm in fiberglass. This is how close we were, just the glass that separated us. Mm. And I could just sit there, it was amazing to be flying up like that and be talking to something. Because you know, you got your radio stuff on, you can talk. And, and so. All right, the uh, time's expired. Call the long roll. Long roll? Or you all right with the short roll? Yeah, I'm fine with short roll. Make sure I'm at it on the roll, please. Short roll. All right, any objection to using previous roll? Hearing none, so ordered. Straw Britton, Mr. Williams. Twenty-seven eyes, zero nays. The uh, BR is adopted. Secretary, call the bill.
On page 48 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 206 by Senator Jones relating to public schools, committee amendment pending. Mr. President, uh, reluctant to do this given the logistics of time, but I'm gonna offer an amendment to this and get on the amendment. All right, so we're on the committee amendment. What are you doing with that? Uh, hang on a second. Senator, you go ahead and talk for a second and I'll, uh, let me see what's going on here. Okay, may I be recognized? Yeah, you're recognized. Okay. okay, and then when he wants to be recognized, that we'll go back to him. All right. You Let me know now. I will yield to you, yes, but, sir. But when you get ready, let me know. I will. We'll stop and do that. And, and, and so, it, you ready? Yes, we're oh, good. Okay, okay. I, I'm going to yield. Mr. President. Same as Mr. President, I will, uh, I will draw that and move adoption of the committee amendment using the previous role without objection. All right, any objection? I, may I have some discussion briefly about the amendment? What does right. it do? Yeah. So uh, this is a committee amendment that was already adopted by the committee. Uh, it's from the High School Athletic Association. It just clarifies, you know, the purpose of this bill is to allow uh, military uh, dependents to immediately be eligible when they come to the state. And so it just clarifies that it's within the school attendance zone of a bona fide move, which is their policy. Um, and it, uh, there's some other softening of some language that they wanted. I'm happy to give you a copy, Senator. It's a uh -uh, couple me, paragraphs. I, I, I want to share something with you about that. You know, life, I, I, I'm sure when I come up here and I be talking, people saying, boy, he done done a whole bunch of things in his life. This is another one that I have done. Now, now I'm on. While before I get to this, I'm gonna finish about my, about the plane, though. And so when we when we uh got ready to go into Belgium, uh, uh, well, I think we went to Brussels, but but each stop they would bring somebody up front to work with the navigator who navigates the plane and. Uh, so we had a contest going on, and the contest was that they would put a glass, a half a glass of water up on the dash of the plane. You flying, and you know how I, 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 the water just sitting there. Well, you ever know when you've been in a plane sometime, when you get ready to land, it come down and say, Ur! or either a boom and then you land. Well, the contest was, who could assist in the navigating, it was three of us, and, and, and who would waste the least amount of water? See, how well you did was determined by where that water flew up out the glass when they were laying there. Well, did that. So, I'm proud to announce to you that you're looking at the winner. When I landed, it, it, didn't, it didn't even, make a noise it just came down like that and just rolled they told me that that, that that they wanted to get a bill to extend the age so i could go back and be a navigator you know <laughs> but we were able to do that so that was a great experience being able to do that <laughs> now in relationship to your amendment let me tell you a little something about this amendment I'm with that get him because I, I really want I want to tell you something about this amendment. This this is this is a real true life story about your oh, ten years no more than ten years. Probably about fifteen twenty no, about twenty years ago. We had a young man whose father was in the military and they assigned him to Alabama, right up to Birmingham. And he came to school at uh, where I was coaching. And, and, and they, were not, they did not want to make him uh, eligible to participate. And uh, as a result of that, same thing that you are curing now with the amendment, that you are that you are correcting with this amendment that that uh I had to I had to represent him in court 
to give him the opportunity to be able to participate without being uh, held out that year because they was having some questions about grades. Not that he didn't make grades, but the content of the subject matter that was being taught and the relationship it was to what we were teaching here at content. And so I was successful because he, we won and he was able to participate. But I was just saying that to say that this amendment does a good job with addressing those concerns. So I think it was a very good amendment and I support it and I turn it back over to you on the amendment. All right, I will renew my motion for adopting the amendment with the, uh, the committee amendment with the uh, previous roll. Am right. I on the roll? Okay. All right, any objection? No. Hearing none, so ordered. Straw Britton. Mr. Williams. Thirty eyes, no nays. Uh, the committee amendments adopted. All right, Senator Jones. All right, Mr. President. Uh, my colleague may wish to speak, but this bill, just uh, as I mentioned earlier, allows uh, dependents of active duty military uh, to participate in high school athletics uh, without having to go through all the hoops and waiting periods and such. Uh, if it's a bona fide move within the school district, I would move for adoption using the previous role, unless my colleague objects. Uh I'd like to be recognized. All right, you're recognized. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, I, let me say this to you. We gonna, we gonna, uh, and I, I wanna say this to everybody in here. We are going to successfully pass these military bills. I mean, let me just say that. We are gonna successfully pass these military bills. So I, I, I want to say that to everyone. Uh, I, but however, I do want to say this. Because of these bills, and because of the gra gravity and, and the, the substance that these bills provide for the people who are protecting us in the military, I, I, I think that as, as I think you and I think several of the other speakers spoke about we were gonna do what we could to, in our roles to be able to help them. And that's the spirit that you see me standing here telling you that these military bills, we are gonna definitely make sure they're passed. And I had to say it that way because in spite of in spite of, in, in spite of the fact that we have a calendar, we have a calendar that has 15 bills on it. And these 15 bills, according to my calculation and my, and my little bitty elementary division, uh, when you get through with your fractions and compound, you know, and all that, it come out that one third of 15 is five. And as I look on this agenda, out of 15 bills, I only see two from the minority side. Now, I stand corrected if it's more than two on there. Somebody correct me, get me straight. I stand to be corrected. But this is my third time in session having a conversation about the calendar and we're not adequately represented on this calendar. So I, I, I do plan on uh, working with each person and I'm gonna give you something to laugh about. I plan on working with each person including working with my own self. <laughs> so, so we can make sure that we pass these military bills. And the reason I said my own self, because I'm actually a sponsor of one of them. <laughs> That's why I said it that way. We gonna pass those bills, you know, we gonna pass them. That's, so nobody have to worry. We, we want them to know that we with them. 
But when we get past those bills, the military bills, and it's not because I got one on there. I mean, I think I've proven myself enough on, when I'm at this mic that they, I'll talk on the one before mine. And it ain't no bad mind. Let's get the other kind of thing. I, I'm consistent with my approach and my position on that. But in light of these being military bills, and it's really sort of like our military day, I'm sure we may have another one, that we're gonna pass those bills, those. But when we get past those bills, then we're gonna be ha having, have to have some serious conversation. Because, and it's gonna start with the simple fact of why in the world we could only get two bills on here. You know, just that simple. It's gonna start with the fact that when we were in the majority, the two-third rule applied and it applies now. It's, being, it's not being fulfilled, but it applies. And it applies to committee calendars. It's supposed to be one third when you put a committee calendar out. And if you think that that's not the case, go back and look in 2008 and 2007 and 2006 and 2009 at committee calendars and you will see and that's when we were in the majority and you will see that the minority had one third one third or more on, on those calendars not just this this one out here the special order but on committee so what that meant if we had one if, if we had one of the minority group bills and that's all in the committee that meant only two of ours could go on there if we had 20, the spirit of, 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 of the rule was that it was one third, two third. For some reason, it's a, it's, it's, it's a little comfortability. I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna create a new word. Uh, com that seemed to be uh, uh, some kind of comfortability, allied, allity to, to being able to ever so often use it as the excuse that, that we don't have enough bills so we can't. When we got bills and committees that's being sit on, okay? And I know the general attitude some people have, you know, about, well, I'm not sure about the bill, whatever. That's what amendments are for. That's what lobbying each other for. That's what the dialogue is for. To get it in a position that it can be compatible to the sponsor and to the, to, to the serious concerns that it um, I, I want to say that as I look at this calendar and to see that that uh, we are well underrepresented on this particular calendar so uh, let's see what that so Mr. Uh, so Senator what else does the bill do? Well, it, the, the way I described it pretty much is it. It just allows uh, public K-12 students, uh, allows them to, uh, if they're a dependent of an active duty military member, to participate in high school athletics. You know, there's no waiting period, no sitting out because they, they're not moving they, they, because they, they just want to move. They're moving because of uh, a work, because they're serving our country. It might not be there for two years. You heard that man say he was there 20 months. So if right. they're there two years, you make them sit out a year, then they go do that again somewhere else. They played two years out of four years of high school. That's right. Yeah. It's a, you know, page and a half. As we like to say around here, it's a, it's a good bill. Well, I, I guess mine must be a good bill because I got a page and a half bill too. That's it. One pay, well, one, not, not both sides neither, one, one side and then a half. That would be a concurrent juvenile jurisdiction, I do believe. Yeah. I remember uh, that's part of our military package. I believe I'm the one who asked you to carry that. So. You did. You did. That's why I gave you an A downstairs, cause you, not because you had me carry the bill, but you've been, you been on this. You know what I mean? You, you, hey, hey, this is my favorite words about about this and about you and about this you've been road tested 
<laughs> I'll take Y'all, it. You, I don't have to test you about this. You've been road tested on this already yourself. So you, you're right. I, I, uh, and, and I want to, you know, you about to give people flowers while they're living. I want to get a lieutenant governor his flowers because you've been on top of this about the military and about what we're doing. I'm talking about from the day you walked in here. I mean, I'm just being honest. The day, that was one of the first conversations you and I had was talking about how, how better you want to move this. So I just want to just say that to you that no, I, I think it's, it's good that we're doing that and uh, I'm going to yield back to you. Do as you please. Thank you, Senator. I will uh, renew my motion for final passage using previous role without objection. All right, any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Williams. 30 eyes, zero nays. Uh, Senate Bill 206 passes amended. Thank you, Senator Jones. Did a good job. Thank you, All Mr. Right. President. Secretary, call the next bill. On page 49 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 209 by Senator Jones and others relating to the National Guard and Reserve. BR pending. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would uh, move for the BIR using the previous role without objection. Uh, Mr. President, I'd be recognized. Be you recognized. BIR. Look like another good bill. It is. <laughs> it looked like one. Tell me a little bit about it. So, Re really, when I say that, so, you know, I, I, I want the, the people who may be listening to know that, you know, most of these bills, I, I know a lot about them. You know, you do too, because right. we have to. But I, I say it for their sake because I want them to hear all the good things that this bill does. So I know, and, and you know, I also have, I've learned, Senator, you're very good. You know, I, I compare this to music. I give you the chords and then you can improvise from the chords and make a little music over there. Is that, that's kind of part of it too. So let me just tell you what it does. That way I can let you work your magic over there. Uh, this bill uh, basically is a income tax, state income tax exemption for active duty guard members and reserve members. Uh, we found out in investigating this that when you add up the states that exempt all military, active military, and those state a partial exemption and those states who have no income tax like Florida add all that up there are 30 states 30 out of the 50 that do not tax our active duty military so well, Alabama needs to join those ranks and that's what this bill does and really the the hit to the budget is not as much as you might think uh, the initial year uh, Fiscal year 2025 is 1.6 million, that's all. After that, uh, 2.1 million each year. Low price to pay to support our men and women. I agree, I agree with you, it is. I mean, that's, that's, hey, that's a bargain on top of a bargain for what they do. You know, and uh, you, you know, you'll be, you, you'll be surprised at, i put it this way. They deserve a raise without me saying something negative about what they get. I'm going to make a positive statement. They deserve a raise. And if this helps them, by God, we should do that. I mean, I I can, you can and I can, can talk about some things we done exempted that nothing bad about them. It just don't reach the level that this reaches to what, you know, to what we're trying to get done with them. You know, I, I'll, t I'll tell you about the, uh, let's see. Oh, this is BIR. We're talking on the BIR. Sorry. How much more time left on that? Okay. I'm going to tell a little short story in seven minutes. Nine minutes, a little medium one. Okay, let's I, what I, let me see, which one I went. Yeah, I went to, one of the times that I went over there, I got a chance to go to Germany. And, and uh, when we got ready to go, they uh, they told uh, I guess he, you know I don't know the ranks like y'all do, but I think what is a colonel, a corporal, corporal, corporal is kind of right here, isn't it? Because the colonel is up here. Okay, corporal. Yeah, they they assigned a corporal to me to stay with me, not in my room, but you know go where I went because they they had already said they said you know we we got a little 
little inside scoop about you, and they said, you like to go places. In other words, what, what the man said, I said, go places? I said, what, what? They said, yeah, you can, you can kind of be at the hotel. I said, I just want to go outside. saying <laughs> you want to go walking and go and play. And, and they said, you know, it's kind of dangerous. You know, not dangerous, but they were just sharing with me. So, so they assigned uh, this corporal. Uh, and uh, it was, it, it, he did a good job. But, 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 but when I got a chance to go to uh, Ryan Stan, you have been to Ryan Stan? I have not. Okay, well I got a chance to go to Ryan Stan over in Germany at the base. And, and you're talking about uh, something awesome. It was awesome. I mean, just to get a chance to see a, a Air Force base of that magnitude, I mean, the inner workings of it and, and, and everything, it was just, it was really, really awesome to be able to get that chance to do this. Now, have you had a chance to go to NATO? I have not. Well, I, I've been blessed uh, to get a chance to go and actually sit at the horseshoe table. You see on TV, mm -hmm. that table to be able to sit there and to be briefed by them and, and, and you talking about an experience of life. But I'm gonna tell you the one that really got me was that I got a chance, you ever heard of people talk about shake? You ever heard them talk about shake? I have. Okay, you know, that's where they do a lot of strategic work. I got a chance to go to shake. And you would think, you would think that it's, it's, it's this big, you know, big, Tower, or big, whatever, like this. You would, if you saw, if you saw the place, you wouldn't even imagine that the decision of defending the world goes on in this little building right there. That was just fascinating mm -hmm. to be able to see that and do that. You know, so, so I, I just shared all that just to say that I have a, you know, it's kind of a stellar, stellar involvement as it relates with the military and you know, knowing what they would do. And I want to say, if you think that we are grateful, and which we are, for what they do for this country, try this. Having gone to those kind of places I just told you, I discovered one thing. That, and I'm just using, it could be 52, it could be 65, so I'm gonna put an average. There are 60 spots in the world that the only presence of milit I mean of of law and order is our military. You hear me? Not the police. They don't have a police that can handle the country. They don't really have a military. These smaller countries. They only have a military. The presence is us. And you said, what's the uniqueness? Cause you know, you hear all the time, folks say, yeah, bring them folks on back home. Bro. Well, let me just tell you something. If we, if we were not in those places, you could conceivably see the beginning of World War III. Mm -hmm. You could conceivably begin to see that. So we not only protect us, but we protect the world. We protect the whole world. And, and, and uh, I mean, you look at, you look at the, or uh, Ukraine situation. If the U.S. ain't in there, they know it's gonna be hard for them to stand up and do what they do, what they are doing, you know. And uh, um, you know, it's it's it's. I'm just glad to know that we are able to draw the line in the sand over there somewhere, and not over here, you know. And so I think that that's very important also. Uh, let me see. There was something else I wanted to ask you about, about that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people, do, 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 did they give you any statistics as to how many people that would Im impact if we passed it? I do not know that. The fiscal note I just have the fiscal note, which they've calculated using that number, but I do not know the exact number. But I do know the number's 1.6 in the first year because it's a partial year and then 2.1. Okay, okay. 
Oh, all right. Well, that's, that's good in itself. Well, it, um, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't ask the question. I probably should have asked the pro team. Uh, he's not in here, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to ask you, you. You get a chance to answer this question. How long you want to be in here today? Hey, I, shorter I, I is always better. No, yeah, but I just want to know because see now I'm, 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 you know, hear what I say about them four bills. So the four bills is the order of the day. So I just need to, to you know how that is. Like, I want to get myself geared up. I want to pass too many too fast, and then I'm, I'm, I'm running in this some of these booger bells. I see that little bell down there. You just picking their head out the tree. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to run into them. So, right. so if 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 I can gauge, it's like a graph. If I can gauge that graph to get to that point. So, it, I mean, do 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 you think that everybody wants to stay to six? You think they want to stay to seven, eight? I, I mean, I just ask you. I ain't saying that we're gonna have it. Four. I was thinking more like three fifty. <laughs> I, I heard from a I heard from a colleague that said there's all right. Time's we, up on the uh, BIR. Um, do y'all y'all want to use previous roll? That's fine. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Straw Britton, Mr. Williams. Thirty eyes, zero nays. The BIR is adopted. Secretary, call the bill. On page 49 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 209 by Senator Jones and others relating to the National Guard and Reserve. All right, Mr. President, I would move for final passage using the previous roll if there's no objection. Yes. All right, Senator Smitherman. I'll let you be recognized. You recognized? Speak. You got it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, I was right in the middle of something good. Cool. Talking about booger bears. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the time and everything. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah that's that's. I mean, you know, I'm. Uh, let me just say it like this. You know, just you know, I have certain things like you see games and things. Certain signals you see, and then you kind of know some things. You know, and so, you know, that's why I put these on. You know, so I can be comfortable. Endurance shoes. Yeah. See these. Um, these. You know, I have two kind of tennis shoes. Okay, I have regular tennis shoes, then I have wide tennis shoes. The wide ones, when you just stand up a lot and your little feet just, you know, your little toe can go like that, versus like that, and you trying to do like that, but they can, like that, that means that you, you can stretch them every so often, see, keep them limb more. And so these are some wide shoes I got on today. Now I brought some thin, you know, narrow ones, then I bought some shoes. But I bought the soft shoes too. But 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 uh I just become prepared. It's not an omen that that's gonna be the case for that day. You see what I mean? It's not predicted like that. Because I don't know, I don't know a lot of time what I'm gonna run into. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I you know, I used to have a little saying. When I come in on the first Tuesday of each month, <clears throat> I was I would ask for a moment of personal privilege, and I would say it was a little while ago. I, I haven't done this recently. I would say, Roger Smillerman, reporting for duty. It's my objective to take your rules and your tools and be successful for the citizens in Senate District 18. So that's 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 the approach I would take, and and so that's that's the mindset that I take when I come, because as I said, I you never know what you what you're addressing and what you're dealing with, you know. See, because looking at this calendar, it it kind of it kind of gets blurry when you see all these other bills on here, when in essence our main objective is to make sure that we take care of the military today. So we got all these other things that are on here, and uh, <clears throat> they 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 have to kind of stand on their own. You know what I mean? They have to kind of do that as well. So, 
When does the tax exempt take effect? So starts this next fiscal year that we're working on now budget wise, fiscal year 2025. Okay, what does, what does the budget chair say about this? Budget chair is supportive, otherwise I would not be standing here today, I imagine. Well, now I won't say that now. You, 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 you might still want to bring the issue out here so we can kind of taste it a little bit, you know. So you might have still been standing there, you know. But that's good then. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now, who all gets the exemption in the military? Is it every person from no matter what the position or the active duty? Uh, what is yes, it? Yes, active duty guard and reserve members. Um, so it basically says members of armed service, reserve components serving in those locations, active duty military members serving in certain locations outside of combat zones as well. Okay, so it's like support people. Well, active duty, yes. So they're, you know, they're not even here. They're serving our country somewhere else, not using Alabama roads and not using uh, Alabama resources. So one of those no-brainers to me, Senator. I know that's right. I know that's right. Well, that's good. How many, how many people do we have in the, in, uh, do you know how many people we have in the Guard? It's a good question I can ask. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Why you looking? I thought I would go get some. Some little backup information if I need it. You know, I don't, but if, if I just in case, I want to have it over here close to me. What did you, oh, 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 uh, uh, <laughs> I like that. You just pop it out there and all of a sudden I'm going to hear a ding and then it going to be right there. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. Approximately 10,500. 10,500. Okay, and now is reserve are they broken down by the branches or, or or tell me about that about reserves? I mean, do you have like Air Force Reserve, Army Reserve, Marine Reserve? Do you have it like that, or do you just have one big military reserve? Even though they may like lean towards certain branches, how is that done? So th this particular bill addresses Guard Reserve, National Guard Reserve. Okay. 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 You been in the guard? You in the guard? I have not. Have you? No, uh -uh. I don't know. I, don't know. I, hey, I can tell you, you always had them good stories. I got you another good story. Is that when back when I was that age, they were drafting people, and I got this notice about coming to the. I, you know, long story short, they said that, like for instance, my number was. You know, they were gonna take 300 people. And my number was like maybe not 135. So I pretty much have known, I said, well, you know, I'm out of here. So I went over there, and man said, what's your name? I said, Roger Smillerman. He said, what's your middle initial? I said, M. And he said, what you said? I said, M. Make a long story short, it went back and re double checked it. It was Roger N. Smilderman, who was 135. Roger M. Smilderman was like 635. That was the difference between me being on the plane and headed over to, I think it was Vietnam or whatever that was, and versus me not. But I thought I was gone. I was getting ready, you know. And and I, I, I but I had made a vow. I'm just gonna tell you. I made a vow. My dad used to tell me. He said, he said, uh, well, let me back out and tell you this, and you'll see what the vow is for that. 
I worked as a clerk for a district criminal judge. And he said he wanted us to go be qualified as deputy, so we had to go through the training. So I went to the obstacle course. On weekends, I took they, what they used to call the Red Book. You know, when they be talking about 10-4 and all that, or in packaging evidence going to the, you know, FBI and all that kind of stuff. So I had to go through that. And then we had to qualify shooting. And uh, let me see, let me look around. The, what the senator, the senator from Tuscaloosa, both of them gone. Anyway, they qualified down at Holt. You know Holt, what I'm talking about at Holt. They qualified down there, and you had to, back then in the day you qualified with a 32. That's how I'm taking you back in history. Now they got them nine millimeters and everything else, and we used to have speed loaders. That's a little, little thing, you know, look like a little spinning cartridge that has the bullets in it. And it's a way that you hit it and lock it into the gun that the bullets will go into the gun, the speed loaders. And uh, I mastered that thing. And, and uh, so we had to qualify shooting shotguns at night. And you know how the posters come up, and you gotta make a decision. Well, that was, that's what I meant. That was one of the problems that I was gonna have probably in the military, because I had said this. All I'm gonna tell you is this. Two of the posters that popped up, they wasn't a bad guy. Uh oh. I blew them away. Blew their poster away. Now you're standing there with your gun, and you out there at night doing it and post to come up, you start boom. I just blew blew it away. So I figured that that was gonna be a challenge for me in the military, cause if I saw something moving, I gotta get it. You know. Cause I I didn't want to be sitting there trying to look and double look and then I put myself out there at arm's way. So that was one of the things that I I did very quickly was be able to do that. Uh, let's see. Is there any age restriction about the uh, exemption? No age. Income, any income restrictions, poverty level kind of stuff, any of that? No income restriction. I mean, if they're in the guard, they're, I would say, making probably a middle of the road income. You know, I'd say they probably a median income. I, what was the median income in the guard in your estimation? In the guard, I, I'll ask that. I have, I have no idea, Senator. Do they work four hours a week in the, when they're in the reserve like that? In the reserve, they do not. Okay. Okay. Well, now if they're if they're um, called up, then they would obviously be working. As yeah. needed, maybe more than forty hours a week. Yeah. Okay. Do they what? Do, do they get a salary, money, or about an hour, or what, how do they get paid? I th I believe it's a it, they're a salaried position. Okay. 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 Do they, how often do they do the war games? You know, exercises. I said not games, but exercises. That's a good question, Senator. These questions are getting harder and harder. <laughs> throw me a softball. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw you a softball. Uh, let me see, is the podium over there? He is. I wonder where he hadn't said so, you know, when, when he gets a chance and we're gonna find out what, what's, what's the general thought of the, of the day in terms of uh, is, is it a, if, are we working to midnight, to 10, to 8? 4.05. 4.05, whatever it is. I, I want to be able to accommodate that. You know, so, you know, see, when, you, when you're not sure, you, you, have, you have dialogue. When, when you're sure, you have filibuster, you know, so this is dialogue. Even though I know time, we go back and forth and people keep it differently and all that, but, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, and see, and I don't, I, I don't, I don't really have my up-to-date calendar, so I don't really know what's all 
I got an old timey one, you know, old Calvin. Not the good one, but an old looking one. And uh, so it's kind of hard for me to make that determination. Well, I take that back, boys. There's a lot of, well, I got it now. I think I do. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now, uh, what else I was going to ask you about that? But you said that you've never been on the, you've never been in the reserves. I have not, Senator. Okay. Right. You had any relatives been in, uh, in the military? Several of my uncles and um, my grandfather served in several different branches of the military. Which, which, uh, which conflicts did they, were they involved with? So my grandfather, I believe, was in Korea. He was right. in the Navy. Okay. Then um, my uncles, I had one in the Army, one in the Marines, and one in the Air Force, I believe, if that's correct. Okay. I've got that right. Okay. Did you ever join the reserves in high school? You know, ROTC, I mean. Nope. I don't even know that we had ROTC available at my school. What school you go to? Cherokee County High School. I've heard of them. Fluctuate between four and three. Right now, I believe we're still four. Okay. Okay. Now, you you live close to the school now? About 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Pretty close. Oh, that's all right then. That's all right. You all have any uh, guard armories there or anything like that? We have an armory that's uh, been repurposed into a city hall and community center. Oh, okay. Look at y'all. That's good. Now, did they build a new one, or did they consolidate one, or what, when they converted that one? So, I, I think so. You know, several around the state closed around that time. There's another uh, in my district in Collinsville, Alabama, that is now a community center and a polling location. Okay. Good. Are, are the people utilizing it? Community center wise, they're you definitely. You know, those buildings were generally well constructed, and you know yeah. they're able to be repurposed and utilized for other things. Okay. Now, were you ever on the city council? Never on the city council. Okay. County commission. I've heard city council and county commission are some of the hardest jobs there are because the least little problem you get a phone call. Well, you know, you right where the rubber meets the road. We ride on the road, but that mud rubble, that's where it meets, you know. Yeah, they, they and, and uh, I can tell you that, you know, when you coach like I do, you right out there in the middle of people, you know, and the plus side, they get a chance to talk to you away from like a place like this. So, right. you know, that makes a difference. Yeah, that makes a big difference. You know, so, uh, well, good, good, good. I, I almost went to the Navy. Almost. I could see you being in the Navy. Yeah, they, they, were, they were, in fact, I was in college and they were recruiting, you know, for officers, candidate training school, and they were training us to be, they said they were gonna train us to be ultimately uh, command a ship. You know, submarine ship or whatever it was, but, but I had a couple of little personal reasons, uh, family issues. You know, I, you know, my dad had had a stroke. You know, so I couldn't. I was reluctant. You know, leaving there, my mom up chicken. I was real reluctant to do, do that. You know, but the other thing too, I said, Lord, I said, I said, I got to go out there on submarine duty 
for six months riding around in that thing out there. I said, I don't know. I said, I might get claustrophobia. I ain't talking about being on a big ship where I can come out and get the breeze and everything, but I'm on the wall. And when would that have been you were considering the Navy as a career? Oh, this was, in, I, I'm telling you my age. This was in the 70s. That, I was going to guess that, but I, I didn't want to say that without being sure. Yeah, yeah. That, so that, you know, what's ironic about that, that's around the same time the Village People song came out. That's right. That a, I was wondering if that was an inspiration. Made it cool to be in the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, I remember the song, though. I remember it quite well. You know, that, that was a period of, 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 of people being very open-minded. That was an open-minded period in our society, you know, and I mean, I don't know what happened, but people were just very open-minded, you know. So, uh, mm -mm. I can see, I can see the, uh, I can see the contrast, the comparison too. But no, it was around that time, you know, and uh, it was attractive now, don't get me wrong. The opportunity was very attractive, but I just didn't, I just didn't, uh, I was kind of reluctant, like I said, to leave, you know, because I didn't want to leave all that responsibility on my mom, you know, as well, so. Well, that's good, though. That's good, I, but I thought about it one time. I really did. I really did, you know, and, uh, but no, I, I, I wasn't in either. What I would love to have done, I think I would have done well you know, I could I could see myself, you know, like Top Gun. Or I could see myself just flying around shooting bullets <laughs> at targets. You know, not necessarily chasing folk down, but chasing targets down. You know, so and we know we have to stand ready here in our state because we got Redstone Arsenal. We got several other. The, the place in Birmingham, we feel we we have pl certain places, Brown Ferry Nuclear. Well, we got a lot. We got a lot to be thankful for uh, and a lot to be uh, watching over to make sure that you know nothing happens to those. You know, you know that first bill that you had. Who do you know? Who did? I mean, I got an idea. But I'm saying, do you know? Do you know the company that? Provides for a big bulk of our education for military kids. Do you know what the name of that company is? What's that, Senator? Well, I was, I was gonna give you a bonus if you had a, if you if you knew it. That's a bonus question. Company it provides in what way? You know, like schooling. You know, like high school, elementary, but they do it on the basis on the military basis. You know, like in Germany, for instance, or somewhere like that, they, they provide education for those military students. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm sure I know, but I just can't recall right now. You ever heard of a company by the name of, of Halliburton? I have. That's who does it. Halliburton provides that for them. Mm -hmm. I was amazing. I was on a train coming out of Baltimore here to D.C. You know how you fly into Baltimore? And I was on the train. And I was sitting by a guy that works for Halliburton. And he explained it all to me. You know, that's a nice little ride. And you could talk to me and tell me all. And I was fascinated by it. I was fascinated by that. As I recall, we had a uh, vice president who was the CEO of Halliburton. Did you know that? He, he was what now? We had a vice president of the United States who was the CEO of Halliburton. Who? That one with Dick Cheney. Oh, he was. For real. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's about the extent of my knowledge of the company. But well, uh, uh, I thought you know if you had told me to guess, you know who I was going to say. Who's that? Alexander Haig. Good but good but see, he was he was involved. I think with United Technology. I think he was involved with you know, I think now, so don't hold me to just be fact. Fact check me, I could be wrong. But he was, he, you know, he was like one of the other people with United Technology. You know, I think they made 
planes or bombs or energies or stuff, engines or whatever it was. Because down from that position, and I guess he had to put whatever he, funds he had or interest he had, he had to put it in trust, you know, managed by someone else while he was in that position. So, so, uh, uh, and, and uh, after two years, he he left. I guess he went back to that, that technology, United Technology. But uh, he was a hard line person too, you know, military wise, you know. I mean, have you um, have you had a chance to go to the White House? I have. It's been a few years, but. I've, now, I've seen it from the outside recently, but uh, it's been a while since I've been inside. Did you get a chance to go in the Situation Room? No, I, I, I don't believe that the, that's a, you got to be a special person to get in there, if I understand correctly. I, I had, I had, uh, back in the day, I had a chance to uh, go and, uh, it was a, I put it this way, we got a chance to pass through there. You know, you couldn't stop. But on the way to somewhere else, we just took the shortcut and went through there. And just, just, or just how you get them chills all over you. You know, now, I got a chance to go to the, uh, uh, swearing in of a uh, Secretary of State. And I got a chance to go to that too, and that was very interesting. You know, that was very interesting. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna make you laugh when I tell you. All I'm gonna say is this, I don't call no name. And I got an invitation, and it's the only invitation I ever got, thank, thank you, the only invitation I ever got to something like that. And 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 uh, it was it was from uh, uh, George Bush, not the daddy, but the the son. W. Mm -hmm. And I went. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I went. Mm -hmm. they had a good time. They, you know. They took care of us, my wife and I went. And you know, like they have you in there. If you ever been to the State Department, they have you in like a security holding place. And then they have to check you out and if everything check out and you go through the security, elaborate security thing about where you got anything on you, you know, anything like that. And uh, we got a chance to go. And uh, it, you know, it was, it was nice. I got got a chance to go to the, you know, you see on TV, I got a chance to go to the treaty room. It's a room with three chairs. Just three chairs was in there. Beautiful. And, and the chairs were set up that the president sits here, secretary of state sits here, and the foreign diplomat sits there. And so when I went in there, you know, I, 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 I said, I, well, I want to sit down in one of these chairs. And so I went in there and got ready to sit down in there, in this chair, just innocently now. And the minute I moved that chair, the person I was with said, you can't sit in that chair. I said, I can't sit in that chair. I said, no, so that's the president's chair. And then they pointed to the di dignitary's chair. They said, you can't sit in that chair. I said, okay, I can't just, no, nah, but you can sit in this chair right here. So I, I said, with the permission, with the permission now of the Secretary of State, I got a chance to sit in the Secretary of State's chair. Okay, with the permission. Because Secretary of State was with us. So yeah, she said, sure, you know. So I, hey, you talking about somebody I thought they was in high cotton. 
I thought I was at High Cotton then. Which, uh, which Secretary of State was this? Do you remember? Uh, uh, Condoleezza Rice. Okay. Yeah. See, she, uh, uh, Secretary Rice and my wife grew up across the street from each other. And they were friends ever since they was in elementary school. So, you see what I mean? We, 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 we weren't strangers. You know, we just had to go through protocol. You know, security clearance and all that kind of stuff. You know, so that made all the difference in the world. You know, but uh, now nah, it was it was just a nice experience. Um, President Bush, you, I got a chance to just, you know, how you and I be talk a little bit like that. As I was surprised how he was like that. You know, I mean, I'm in. Uh, you know, I'm sitting up there with, with him and I talking. And, and this is after the thing. Had ended. Looked in, the, found myself in a room, and it was about out of room that had, had about two or three hundred in it. Well, I said two hundred in it. All of a sudden, it's about six people in the room. It's him, Miss Bush, uh, Secretary of State, my wife, myself, and you had two Secret Service people. You know, maybe more than two, but I saw two. And just and just get a chance to talk to him. It wasn't all that, you know. I mean, because he was down to earth. He he set the tone. You know, it was something he did. He asked me question. Did you see what I just did? <laughs> I said I did. He said you think that was all right? Is that what he said? He said you think that was all right? I said yeah. I said you did good. And then he patted me on the shoulder. He said yeah. You back out of fella. I, I like you. <laughs> So it, it was it was a great experience, but I, I, I said all that to, as we talk about the military and about what you're trying to get done at Texas Empire. It's very it's very good, you know. And so I'm let me see. I never did find out from the pro ten. I never did find out from the pro ten. So I see the majority leader. Well, I need to break the news to you. I was told that they said they, they want to stay here at about 10. 10? They, 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 they wanted to see, because we had been out a week, they wanted to see what kind of endurance did I have. So I, I want to... I want to show what kind of endurance I got. That's all. So you know, you know how you have the 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 the, the six. I want to show them that I'm the twelve hour man. You know, you have six hour men, three hour men. Eight food was yesterday. Eight food was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me. <laughs> you know, so it, that tells me that they 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 want to. They said that. The, the person that said that told me, I said, well, where are you from? They told me about that, and they said, they from the show me state. Missouri, that's right. So Missouri, you have to show folks. So I said, well, okay. So, uh, so I'm going to adopt the show me state since that. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I, I just got that impression. So I, you know, that's why I went, really, that's why I went and got this. Cause I got a bunch of good facts in here, you know, a bunch of good things in here that I can talk about, you know, uh, bearing down a little closer as it relates to the actual law and whatnot in here. And then, you know, we are, uh, you know, anytime they send you these little things like this, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you know what's in there. I do. They have that the little bag of stuff about the law and all like that, you know. <clears throat> so. I, I had to go there and get it just in case if, if it was something that I needed to share with everybody, you know, and let them see the values of, yeah. of, of, of these things like this particular bill, you know. So um, you told me 10 o'clock. No, I, I was told that. Told I mean, okay, I, okay. I'm, not, I'm not telling everybody 
I'm saying is almost eight of the ten. If, if that's what if that's what the objective is, I'll stay the ten. If it's the, if it's eleven, I'll stay the eleven. You know. Fuck. You remember you remember what I did Thursday? Yeah. I had a senator who he was sitting behind me. He said he he he, he saw me in the parking lot, and he said, "Look." I got this thing that's that's happening. I, it may have been a family thing or whatever. And they said, what time it was gonna take place. And they said, take these many hours to get home. And so, I said, all right. So I knew the end. To do that, we would be here to a certain time, mm -hmm. if they honored that. So it helped me gauge how I got to the point like the four bills I was talking about, how I can get there at that point we said. You I see what you. I'm saying? Yeah, so that's why you saw me ask the question. Because, see, I, uh, otherwise, you know, I, I can get out of proportion with time. And that's not my intent, you know, because we're going we gonna to pay these bills, you know, these military bills. We're going to do that. So, but I didn't want to go past that particular time, you know, that... Everybody kind of envisioned in their mind right. how we were going to operate, you know, so. Uh, let me see. How many high schools do you have in your district? So high schools, I don't know, but if you add high schools, middle schools, elementary, of course I have some that are K, K through 12, it's about 60. 60? Yes. What? Whoa. That, what are you that representing? Yeah, that Whoa. includes uh, two private schools, So, but I'm yeah. counting them too. Well, well, I mean, what's your district? So, all of Etowah County. Etowah. That's right. Oh, okay, gas in Etowah. Okay. Yeah, Etowah's got three systems. Yeah. All of Cherokee County. Okay. And the southern part of DeKalb County. Oh, so okay. we got five school systems. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you got a lot of them. And uh, you'll recognize uh, our best, probably our best basketball school will be Spring Garden. Oh, yeah. About 10, 10 12 minutes from my house. Oh, they, 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 they were back there with James Naismith. <laughs> they can play ball. I mean, girls can play ball up there. Ooh. The girls are all, yeah, the gr boys are good, but the girls are always good. They are always I mean, them girls can play. You know, I just, okay. That's good then. How, how big is that community in terms of people? It, is, it is not even a town. It is a, it is a community uh, in the middle of kind of between Center and Piedmont in Calhoun County. Okay. And um, that's, a, I believe, a 1A school. Okay. So it's a pretty small, very rural farming community. Okay. I know one thing, it, 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 they do a lot of hooping up there, I know that. You know why they're so good in basketball? Hmm, what's the reason? Because they don't have internet out there, and they don't have good cell phone service, so the kids got nothing to do but practice. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, that, that make, you could tell practice make perfect. That's right. Yeah, because I mean, I, they be in Birmingham just about all the time for the playoffs. We're working on internet out there, but I hope it doesn't cost us a championship. <laughs> well, did, uh, are you all going to benefit from the broadband expansion? Oh, yes. Good. But uh, some of that, you know, is through federal, federal action. Uh, there's a program that exists for telephone companies. You can imagine they're not getting a lot of business these days. Yeah. So Congress and their, uh, their wisdom has uh, decided that they're going to fund some internet expansion through the historical telephone companies. Okay. One of which is uh, in Cherokee County. Uh, and that's, that's good because we're getting more dollars, but uh, the downside of that is that, uh, you know, the, in the state of Alabama, I serve on the IDEA board. Generally, we give them two years to complete a project. Federal government's a little too lenient. They're giving them six years. Ooh -wee. So, um, oh, yeah. that's the downside. Yeah. Slow coming. Slow coming. What kind of speeds they're giving y'all? 
supposed to be 100 over 10. It's supposed to be the standard, the okay. minimum standard, so. Okay. Well, I can tell you, I've had... Go so fast, sometimes it get off line or something. But the, but the hundred over ten, what you saying? I I never had a off line. And I cost more than the three hundred. Hmm. But the three hundred is, it's like I said, it's kind of flimsy. I mean, I I was standing up here and I had to. Uh, you know, I, 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 I was concerned about some disconnection that I had back at home. But I was glad to know I got a little message and it said that it was all right, you know. Uh, said that it was all right. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> let's see what we, as we talk about these particular bills. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm actually up next. That's right. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. I thought I was the fourth one, but I'm the third one. Then you can come back up there while I, mine come up and talk like I'm talking. Oh, I'd, I'd, That'll be all right. I'd, I'd love to, Senator, but I, I have a I have another engagement. <laughs> I don't mind it. We could dialogue the same way. I, you know, I believe in equal. You know, this is a true statement. You know, we talking about this. I believe in equal opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't deny you a bit, and we'll help you. I'll participate with you. That's how much I'll be involved with you. Well, yeah. I love your bill, and I just don't want to stand in the way of you and a good bill. So, <laughs> well. Let me see who we got up here. I, uh, I didn't know whether he, that, that we had someone over there that was looking to come or not. But uh, I'm going to, uh, have you made any, you made a motion, didn't you? I did. I'm more than happy to renew it if you'd like me to. Well, probably in a few minutes. You know. I, I can endure. Oh, 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 I know you can. I wasn't. I wasn't meaning it like that. I'm just trying to time myself. That's all, you know. Now, let's see. Did you did you go out and visit any of your military bases this week? The past when we was out that week, did you go to visit them though? I've been to in the past. Uh, <clears throat> let's say eight 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 to ten months. I've been. Uh, five or six places probably in my role as chairman. It's been quite enjoyable. You know, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you the story. This, that, there's some truth in the story now. There's some truth in the story. Kernel of truth. Yeah. We were sitting, we were in Belgium, and so we were sitting in this square, in this square out there, and, and uh, in fact, let me see. I'm trying to think. Let me see who was with me out there. It's only one senator that's in the Senate right now who's at that spot where I was out there. Okay? One senator. They're not on the floor right now, but they were they were one of the senators who was who was uh, who was out there. And, and I'm going to tell you something interesting about your position. At that time when we went out there, I was, I think I was chairman of Judy at that time. And so this was, I'm sitting at the, I'm sitting at this particular table out there and well, I got three other people sitting at the table, no, four other people sitting at the table with me. And two or three of them were a member of your party, okay? Mind you. So they were sitting there and they said, Smilma, don't you hear this, don't make you laugh. 
that's there. You know, we gonna change your position. I said, what you gonna change to? I said, we gonna change it to, you know, all, all it was called and dealt with then, is, it was military affairs, okay, committee. Now, it didn't have all the meat like yours got in there, put safety and all that stuff you do now. They just had military fail. And they said, they said, what we're going to do, we're going to give you, we're going to change your office. And you know, when we walk out the back door, you know, when we go out the elevator back there, you know, to the left, right there before you get to where the elevator, to the left, there's a little closet. It's the closet right there. You see the janitorial people go in there and get stuff out. Right. They told me, they said, we're going to change your committee to military affair, and we're going to change your office. They told me the closet was going to be my office. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, okay. I said, that's fine. They said, what you think about it, Smith? I said, this is what I think about it. I said, each month, I said, each month, <laughs> I said, each month, I'm going to get a resolution passed by our congressional people simultaneously with resolution passed by the legislature recognizing that branch, branch of the military. So I'm going to have a federal resolution and I'm going to have ours. I said, then, once a month out there, the branch that we recognize, I said, we're going to have a parade. You know, floats, like it was the Air Force, you're going to have the planes going down there and marching band, the airport band, and all like that. I said, and then we're going to invite the, the major cable network, CNN, MSNBC, Fox. I said, we're going to invite everybody to the parade. Well, you, you remember Larry Dixon? They talk about Larry Dixon. Okay. I remember the name. He, he was one of them. Never met him. D Dixon hit his hand on the table, not out of anger. We, because we all were joking. He hit his hand on the table. He said, Smilderman, he said, I ain't never seen somebody like you. So we talking about trying to get you lemons. And you trying to tell us how you going to make lemonade. Out <laughs> them lemons we tried to get you. And, and, and everybody started laughing. So all I was telling you is that, see, they don't know the potential that your committee has. They don't know. That's right. They, you know, that's why you <laughs> smile at it too. They don't know. I mean, they don't know. That's, that's, that committee has so much potential to just do, touch so many lives and do so, so much great work and solid things because as it relates to the military, you know. And so, uh, you hear what I said? See, I, gave, I might have gave you some suggestions. I think so. <laughs> all, all, always remember this now. When we float, when we ride on the float, I want a seat by you. <laughs> so we can, we can wave at everybody. I want a seat by you up on the float. <laughs> Anytime, you're welcome, sir. <laughs> Well, where, where does Sunday go? I, I, I hope I get a chance to see the minority leader. I hope I get a chance to see him. And get a chance to talk to him before he lead his flow. Mr. Minority Leader. Mr. Wilk. Before you lead, I need to see you. I, I just need to see you. Don't stop. That's big. That's the big man right there. The big wheel. <laughs> but uh, yes, I, I I think that we we are. Uh, I was going. Uh, he, he said that, but I I, I was going to see. I I knew what I was going to do. And guess what I told him? I said, you know, the closet. The closet is kind of small. I told him. I said, you know how you put them. You put the, like in them bathtubs where you have the seat where you take a bath. I told him I was gonna put me a, 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 a seat, a cushion seat on the wall with a cushion back. And then I was gonna put one across the closet 
so I could put my feet up over there. You know how you be in a hamlet and stretch out and relax? And then you know how the door was made. I was gonna get me a 40 inch TV and turn it sideways so it'll be on the door, on the inside of the door. That's why I was gonna fix that closet up. I was gonna have to put some lights in there and everything. The dimmer lights in there. And then I had to cut a little peep, you know, how you have a little, at, on a ship in the Marines. I mean, how you go on a cruise, I had that little window you have where you cut it in there. I was gonna cut me a little window in there. Where I could see y'all walking up and down the hall. You know. So, uh, but they told me, they said, they said, they said you, you too creative. We can't, get, we can't do that because you, you gonna turn it into something real nice. And I told him, I said, that's what you're supposed to do, you know, in those situations. Mr. Minority Leader. Take me for a minute. As I was saying, uh, Mr. President, the gentleman yields to me. Sure. <laughs> How's the military? <laughs> well, I think uh, they're doing good. In Alabama, I think we're making great strides. All right. How do you feel? Well, you know, um, I think that we're, we're doing good. Um, I looked at that crew of generals up there today that we were recognizing, and I just sometimes wish we can have a little bit more diversity in it. And um, I just, and I'm just an advocate for diversity because I think it just makes the state greater when you, when you can have diversity. You know, it just get people moving, working together, and moving down. Um, I like to see those guys stand up there with their stars on their shoulder and say that they'll put in the work, you know, and they, they have to go through. It's a, that's just not an easy process to get to where they are, you know. And so. Um, just hopefully that um, we can keep a strong military that continues to protect, you know, our nation. Um, because when you look at the military, the military itself is probably, you know, 60% black and brown in terms of service men in it. And so um, we continue to strive in that direction and give a lot of a lot of service back to this country. You know, my father served in Vietnam, and um, he was in uh, I guess what you used to call old mash unit. He was medic. He was on the medic side, and and, um, and um, I had a couple of uncles to serve. Um, just in the regular army, and I don't think I've ever had, I don't think I had anyone else to serve outside of the army branch. They all served in the army branch, because I had four uncles to serve in the army. Uh, no, no one else ever served in in the uh, Marines, Air Force, or Navy. But um, I can remember coming out of high school that I signed up for the Marines. And you know, you go on those pre-college deals where they give you an opportunity to go to school and then you have to come out and do your service after you come out of school. And so by the time I got to school, uh, then you have that, I think, 15 months period of time to where you can opt out. And I opt out before my time was up. <laughs> So I never served in the military. And so um, sometimes now I wish I had. Um, and, but um, I just think that, you know, we've, we've done a lot for servicemen in this country. We've gone through a process. I just heard you out here doing a bill based on them being able to go through athletics. And, you know, if they do that, that that a major move that they do inside of the middle, inside of uh, athletics, then they can play immediate once they move here uh, from another state, uh, giving giving them an opportunity to play without having to set out. Uh, I think that's a good deal. Uh, 
Because kids are kids, and, 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 and there's no need in them sitting out a whole year trying to wait on that uh, athletic association to allow them to play just because they were had to move by no choice of their own, but because th their parents was assigned to another military base. And so they should not have to give up on their, their uh, careers or their dreams as an athlete uh, waiting for, you know, because of someone else's decision. And we know that when you're in the military that those decisions aren't necessarily those of your own. You have to move when, as we call them, Uncle Sam say you gotta move. And when the uncle call you to go, you gotta go. Simple as that, you know? Or else they'll get you for, what is it, wall if you don't show up, you know, to your post. Um, and so I know that um, I had a good friend of mine that was about a week late showing up for his post. And by the time he had left home, uh, those guys in them uniform were knocking on his mom door want to know where he was. <laughs> so he went on in and he reported in, but he was just out not going AWOL, he was just out partying. He, was, he had gone through basics, had gone over to um, Iraq on a first tour, came back, had a couple of weeks off, and it did, just didn't show back up before a week later. But they were ready to send him back to the desert again, so. Um, but, you know, I think we should continue to have a strong military. What was really interesting today is that I heard that, you know, we had all of these soldiers that are down on the southern border. And if we have that many soldiers on the southern borders, then I'm wondering, what is the real problem with the southern borders? Is the governor to continue to jump in with his police and everybody down there that makes it hard? You know, I guess if the president didn't federalize them all, then he'll be embarrassed that if they go in and take over his people from him, you know, because if we got all these troops that are down here, they already being federalized even though they're coming from our National Guard, so they obviously been called in to do something. They are covering a 2,000 miles, I mean 20,000 miles script uh, that's down there from one end of the border to the other end of the border from the, from what he said, from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, that's 2,000 miles. That's 2,000 miles. So if they're covering that, and this is the, the, the uh, group out of Mobile that's basically doing that, then what are our, what are our real problems? I know we got servicemen and police, and, and maybe it's, it's, it's about what they can and can't do. Because a lot of times they're just sitting duck, they're sitting there, they're just watching, can't do certain things, can't do other things. Because I guess INS has to come in with their program, get people in and get them signed up, do what they have to do, and they're just there to keep order, to make sure, but if people are still crossing the border, but you know, I don't know why we're, you know, so, you know, fixated with that whole border piece, man, because they, the people gonna get across that border, you know, they go into them rat holes and dig those tunnels, and when they show you build a wall, they'll show up on the other side of the wall over in, in, in Tijuana somewhere. <laughs> by, the time, by the time they come up again, it's almost like, you know, if you got a, have you, you ever seen the otter in the water? The otter goes down, and next time you see him, he might be up on the other side of the pond somewhere when he come up again. <laughs> you know, so it's just difficult to, to control. I mean, just think about it. When we talk about the southern border, what, what, if, what, if, the, what if the Indians had put up a border wall and said, we don't want y'all in our country? What would have happened then? We probably even been here talking about these freedoms that we enjoy today, you know? But we, we, we want to keep everybody else out, though. You know, but that's just interesting to me. You know, I saw a cartoon like the other day say, you know, the first border wall had it been, you know, Chief Tomahawk had, you know, built him a wall and said, you pilgrims can't come and we'll keep y'all out. But what they did was they welcomed us into this country. I just think that we should be without borders. This is just God's world and you know, I know that we, 
we have dangerous people in the world and that's we have dangerous people right here in this country you know that's why we have prisons that's why we locking them up we have dangerous people all over the world you know um, we talk about rapists and drug dealers coming across. Well, we got rapists and drug dealers right here in this country already, you know? And so, it's just, it's just that, you know, people are people, we're human beings, and I think that, you know, we, we put boundaries, too many boundaries around the world on, on people, on certain ends of the world. See, people can come from Europe as long as they want to. We, we, we letting them come in, they can come straight in on the Concord, jet, fly in. But when you try to come from the southern border, that's a problem. Or you try to come in from Haiti or somewhere like that, that's a problem. Those are people of color. Only people of color got problems trying to get into this country. We don't, we don't put a whole lot on people who are coming out of Europe or anywhere else. We, that northern wall don't need to be there. It's just a southern wall that needs to be there. And so I have a problem with that. I really have a real problem with that. And so um, that's why I think that, you know, we sit here and we always talk about immigration. You remember Trump said he was going to make Mexico build a wall, but now everybody want to blame it on Biden. What happened to Mexico building the wall? Mexico ain't raised their eyebrow to build a wall. You know, so all of this is rhetoric, man. This is something that's been going on and will continue to go on from one administration to the next, and one going to blame the other. As soon as... Biden goes out of office, somebody else come in, then Democrat gonna be blaming that, that president for the, for the border problem. Because the border problems are not gonna stop tomorrow, okay? I don't care if you build a thousand foot fence, people gonna find their way into this country. And they're gonna, they're gonna get here. And, and at the end of the day, you gotta also understand is that border patrolmen, they gotta work, they got mortgages, they got kids, they got people with kids in school. They ain't trying to stop everybody else. And then if they stop everybody from coming in, they might lose their job. They might not be needed anymore, you know? And so, so we just gotta think about those kind of things. It's just some realities out there. I saw a movie like that one night. Which brought me to that, this conclusion, uh, Senator. There was a drug deal, right? Right down on, in like, um, on the southern border, right? Drug plane had flown in on the U.S. side. And so they had set up the steam to be able to catch them. They were waiting to catch these guys. So one of the DEA agents, as they were about to come out, came out and shot his gun in the air. And the drug dealers look up, they jump back on the plane, and the guy was like, why, 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 why you do it? The guy turned around and told him, say, hey man, we gotta have some work for tomorrow. We gotta have some work for tomorrow. I got kids, I got mortgages, I got kids, and we, if we bust every drug dealer that coming in here, we ain't gonna have no, no job tomorrow. So you gotta, you gotta believe that some people out there thinking like that. And then you got those great officers out there who just wanna stop it. But then at the end of the day, what's gonna happen? You know, we got people who are out there, we, we even talk about the southern border, but nobody ever, talk, nobody ever look at the northern border. Nobody ever look at those other areas where other folks come in this country from, and they just blend in, mix in, and stay here for as long as they want to. But, you know, if your name is Raul Ramirez or Jojo, and Jojo Ramirez, you might get thrown out of here in a minute, man. You know, so, <laughs> whenever you ask them. But uh, but this military bill, but I was really amazed to know that I did not know that our mobile company was patrolling down on that southern border and had been there and has that wide range of latitude to be able to, patro to patrol on the southern border, as it was reported today by uh, our military colonel as he talked to us today. So that was really interesting in hearing, and I knew we had troops you know, down in the area, but I didn't know that there, it was that extensive to where, you know, they're down on the southern, southern border like that. So it seemed to be only at the southern border that's the problem, you know, and that's where people of color are coming in at, but there ain't no problem on the northern borders. Ain't no northern part of the northern borders where nobody else is coming in this country. And so, I mean, I just think that, you know, we're all God's children and and people are decent and, 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 and that, uh, you know, diversity is what makes this country great. 
uh, if you take away all of the accomplishments and all of the inventions and things that people of color done in this country, this country would be in trouble. You know, because did nobody want to do that work? Y'all didn't want to do that work that we did in them, in them cotton fields and making inventions and stuff. You didn't want to do that work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Mr. President, I'd like to yield back to the gentleman from Jefferson. <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah, Senator Smitherman. Yes, sir. I'd like to continue. Yeah, you're recognized. All right. I, uh, he, he brought out some pretty interesting points. He did. You know, I mean, think about this. Think about this. Just think about this. Think about that. I I I was trying to think about how I want to phrase it, and and I'm, I'm hey I'm like Kenny Rogers sometimes, you know how that is. You know what I'm thinking of. You gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And then know when to let them go. So that that particular thought, I thought I was, I, I was going to hold it, but I think I'm going to let it go for now. Because uh, it doesn't, I, I, I want to get back to where we really, really centered where we are. And that's on this tax exemption. You know, we used to have a policy that if you give an exemption, you got to find some revenue. Now, I, you know, I hope that, I hope that this is one of those kind of situations that it spill over, that we will be motivated to do some additional things for our uh, kids in public education as well. You know, I realize, I like the things we're doing in the military side, but I hope that that spill, that'll spin over and to public education, to where we would uh, do some additional things. Uh, Mr. J Mr. Uh, Chairman, Mr. President, I'm gonna yield back to the uh, Senator. Our Senator Jones. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I will renew my motion for final passage using the previous roll without objection. All right, any I, objection? I, I'd like to have a long roll. Long roll? Yes, sir. All right, Secretary, call the long roll. Mr. Albritton. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Bell. Mr. Butler. Mr. Carnley. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Chesteen. Ms. Coleman. Ms. Coleman Madison. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Hatcher. Mr. Hovey. Mr. Jones. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kitchens. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr. Mr. Price. Mr. Reed. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Shellnut. Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Ms. Waver. Mr. Williams.
30 ayes, 0 nays. Senate Bill 209 passes. Thanks, Senator Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Secretary, uh, call the next bill. On page 24 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 210 by Senator Schmidtman relating to juveniles, BR pending. Mr. Senator President, Schmidtman. Uh, move for adoption of the BIR and uh, I don't know, I guess previous role. All right, any objection? Role. Hearing none, so ordered. Okay. Mr. Albritton, Mr. Williams. <clears throat> 31 ayes, 0 nays, the BR is adopted. Secretary, call the bill. On page 24 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 210 by Senator Smitherman relating to courts and judges. Mr. President. Senator Smitherman. This is uh, a, one of the bills in the military package. And, and once again, I, I appreciate the... Uh, uh, support of them, of you with the involvement with me in this, in this, you know, the military stabilization and this bill. What it does is tries to streamline the process for uh, military uh, young people who may have had some problems uh, where they would be able to have concurrent jurisdiction with our courts, so that 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 matter can be addressed. The bill seeks to. Uh, provide that if there is a difference uh, in the interpretation of the law from the federal to the state, then as we know it, at the supremacy clause, which is the federal government, would, would supersede. But where they have concurrent uh, uh, applicability in terms of the punishment range or the elements of the crime, then it defers to the state courts. Or our state system, i.e., or the military system, whichever one is more appropriate and more, I'm sure, more convenient for that family and the military people. So, with that in mind, if there's no questions, I'll move for final passage and then ask the Navajo consent to use previous role. All right, any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. Albritton, Mr. Williams. 31 ayes, 0 nays. Senate Bill 210 passes. Thanks, Senator Smitherman. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, uh, Secretary, call the uh, next bill. On page 24 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 211 by Senator Chastain relating to public education. BR pending. Senator Chastain. Mr. President, I move the BR using previous role. All right, any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. Albritton, Mr. Williams. 31 ayes, 0 nays, the BR is adopted. Secretary, call the bill. On page 24 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 211 by Senator Chastain relating to public education. Members, this is another one of our education uh, military bills. Uh, under current law, children of active duty soldiers who are transferring into the state can enroll in, the public, uh, in our public schools remotely and what this bill would allow would be uh, children with special needs to be able to uh, enroll remotely before they transfer into the state. Any questions? I, I just have right. one. Senator Schmidlin. When, when you say remotely, so what's that? I mean, I know what remote mean, but I want to in this context. Online, online. They oh, can, okay. They can enroll in the classes oh. that they're coming into online. Now, let me ask this question, and I'm not, if you, you know, if you know, tell us. If you don't, I don't understand. All right, because these are students the way that you said that they were special needs students, is it a, how would they get ultimately on the 504? When they, if they have, they currently have a 504 from the system they're coming into. Okay. Okay, so that would follow them into the state and then there would be that, the IEP would follow that child into the state and then there would be that conference with the parents and the local school board making sure that they are complying with or meeting the needs of the special needs child in that, in that system. Okay, that's all, you okay. go right on. The no other questions asked for final passage using previous role. All right, any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Straw Britton. Mr. Williams. 
31 ayes, 0 nays. Uh, Senate Bill 211 passes. Thank you, Senator Chastain. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Secretary, call the next bill. On page 41 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 219 by Senator Shellnut, creating the Alabama Farm Center, BR pending. Uh, Mr. President, I move to pass the BR using previous role. Mr. Speak Jackson. to the BR. All right, Senator Singleton, you want to speak yes. to the BR? All right. Senator, thank you. Uh, I, I know we came up, you and I have talked about this bill. You know that I have some, some issues with this bill at the time that you're bringing this bill. And I'm not gonna prolong this a whole lot. You and I already have an understanding of what we're gonna do with this bill. I'm not even gonna talk to 20 minutes here on, on the BIR, okay? But I do reserve my right to when this bill come back up to, to allow me to even speak my piece about this bill and to bring forth the amendments to be at at least voted up or down. I just think that this is a bad bill for the state of Alabama. Um, I think the concept is a great concept uh, in terms of what we do. I think it's just by the way that we're going to do it uh, gives a whole lot of power to an organization that I think that does not render that power uh, because they're not a governmental agency themselves, they're more of a private business. I don't have a problem with public-private partnerships as public-private partnerships work themselves out, but when one organization wants to take on something, disguise it as a public piece when they're really going to be the ones who's going to benefit. I understand today it's Bill is just setting up destruction. Tomorrow is probably going to be sitting up and asking for money. I know you're going to come back next year and probably ask for money for it. So, in as much as there's not a money in this bill currently, I have those problems with the bill based on, you know, the taxing of it, uh, the contractors, the immunity that it gives, the ability to be able to go into an area to, and sit up in, in jurisdictions, whether or not it is a... Hey, I know you got a special piece of property you already looked up, but even this bill would say if we were in a, a housing zone, they could still uh, sit up. Or if they were just in a pure industrial zone, they could still sit up. They don't have to abide by any zoning ordinance or anything of that nature. I do understand that you have an amendment that you're going to be later bringing once we bring the bill back up that has a severability clause in it, and I saw that. That means that something I read is, is not legal about it while you're bringing the bill, the reason you want to bring a severability clause. That's why I want to talk about this and slow this thing down and talk about it, because if, you, if everything was legal, you wouldn't need the severability clause. That that you're offering in the amendment. I read the amendment you left on my desk. That's the first thing to pop out with the severability clause. That means that if something is already, un if something is declared unconstitutional about this, then the other parts of it will remain constitutional that will, is constitutional. So obviously something is already not constitutional about it, that you have to put this in it. And so that's what I'm scared of in this particular bill. And so I understand the general lady from Jefferson is standing behind me. Oh, I'm from Mobile. Mobile, I'm sorry. For Mobile County, I apologize. For Mobile. You better apologize. May, may want to say something. May, I'm sorry. The, the, the lady from Mobile County, not Nowhere else but Mobile. She represents Mobile and a little bit of Baldwin. And she might want to have something to say. And uh, then we'll, we'll close and let you pass, let you do your BR, and we'll carry it over. Is that the deal? Yeah, that's a green that's what, and you've talked about. That's can, you know, I like to call it, it the it deal committee that came out the deal committee with it, right? It's just but, me and you on the deal yeah, committee. Yeah, that's the agreement. Yeah, that's, sometimes that's all it takes. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes, okay? Sometimes that's all it takes. And so, uh, Mr. President, I would like to deal uh, yield to the general lady. All right, Thank Senator Figures. Senator Smith. Thank you, Senator Singleton. Thank you, Mr. President. So, as I understand it, you are going to carry this over after you pass the BIR? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, that's I'll just- That's the plan, unless you have a different plan, but that's the plan. <laughs> no, 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 I- <laughs> Oh, no, oh, wait a minute. I, I, uh, <laughs> it, 
Well, definitely, uh, I'm hoping that you'll carry it over because I do have some questions and I think that there are things in this bill that needs to be explained uh, on the floor. So if you're going to do that, I will just um, wait until it comes back up. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President, uh, uh, SB 219, I motion to carry the bill over. At this oh, did you want to adopt no, you the BR No, you want to get your BR. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I want my, well, you can carry it on now. No, 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 I'm trying to give the you your BR. Uh, uh, yeah, move Use the right. long roll. All right, Secretary, call the long roll. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Barfoot. Aye. Mr. Beasley. Aye. Mr. Bell. Aye. Mr. Butler. No, Mr. Mr. Carnley. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Chastine. Ms. Coleman. Ms. Coleman Madison. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Hatcher. Mr. Hovey. Mr. Jones. Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kitchens. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr. Mr. Price. Mr. Reed. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Shillnut. Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Ms. Weaver. Mr. Williams. Twenty six eyes, six nays, the BR is adopted. Secretary call the bill. On page forty one of the calendar, Senate Bill number two hundred and nineteen by Senator Shellnut relating to agriculture. Committee amendment pending. All right, Mr. President, I move for SB two nineteen to be carried over. All right, just carried over? Using previous roll with no objection. Yeah, just carry over. All right, not call the chair, just carry it over. Yeah, just carry it over. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, Senate Bill 219 is uh, carried over. All right, Secretary, call the next bill. On page three of the calendar, Senate Bill number 98 by Senator Orr relating to public school security, BR pending. Mr. President, Senator Orr. Uh, I would use uh, the move the BIR using. Okay. The long roll since we have. All right, Secretary, um, call the long roll. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Bell. Mr. Butler. Mr. Carnley. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Chastine. Ms. Coleman. Ms. Coleman Madison. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Hatcher, Mr. Hovey, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kitchens, Mr. Livingston, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Sessions, 
Mr. Shelnut. Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Ms. Waver. Mr. Williams. Thirty-three ayes, zero nays. The BR is adopted. Secretary, call the bill. On page three of the calendar, Senate Bill Number Ninety-Eight by Senator Orr, relating to public school safety. Committee amendment pending. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this time, I'd move to table the committee amendment. I have a revised one. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Committee amendment is tabled. All right. Did you introduce an uh, amendment, Senator Orr? Yes, sir. All right, I Secretary Reed received the amendment. Amendment to Senate Bill Number 98 by Senator Orr. Replace lines 43 through 45 on page 2 with the following. Replace line 108 on page 4 with the following. Replace line 111 on page 4 with the following. Replace line 113 through 116 on page five with the following. Replace line 118 on page five with the following. Replace line 136 through 138 on page five with the following. Replace line 148 on page six with the following. Replace line 154 on page six with the following. Replace line 198 through 199 on page 8 with the following. All right. Yeah. Door. All right. Uh, members of the committee amendment uh, merely reflects input from the education committee. It just does a few things. I don't see any questions about it. I'd move adoption of the committee amendment using the previous role. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Williams. <clears throat> 33 ayes, 0 nays. The uh, Senator Orr amendment's adopted. Senator Orr. Uh, if there are no questions, I'd move third reading, but uh, I'll yield to the gentleman across the way. I, I don't, don't go on the way. I don't have any questions. I just want to uh, compliment you on the bill. You know, it's, it's, it's a good bill. You, I appreciate you explaining it to me. Thank you. Uh -huh. It's a very good bill. I mean, I just can imagine, especially in isolated areas where schools are. That, uh, in fact, somebody was talking about Spring Garden School and where it was located more in a community than in actually in the city. And, you know, you you need this kind of security that, that you're trying to get for these schools. They don't have a lot of money. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they well, That's the reason they need our help and we need to concentrate our money where the help is needed. And uh, I've got, it's kind of based on the state of Louisiana and they have a, a grading sheet as you and I talked about. It's got a bunch of great, you know, how we evaluate these various schools and the lower, the less secure schools will get the funding first. And I, and I think that's a great idea. But I just want to tell you that, that security is very important and it's just a world we live in now, you know, whether we, we'd like it or not. So appreciate you kind of focusing on what you're Thank doing. you for the kind words. I'd move third reading, Mr. President. All right. Any objections? Using the previous role. Hearing none, so ordered. Mr. Albritton, Mr. Williams. 33 ayes, no nays. 33 ayes, zero nays. Uh, Senate Bill 98 passes. Thanks, Senator Orr. All right, Secretary, call the uh, next bill. On page 47 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 200 by Senator Kitchens, relating to the Board of Nursing, BR pending. Mr. President. Senator Reed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, at this point, we've done some good work today. We've had a lot of things going on. I've had conversation with Senator Kitchens. He knows that his legislation is going to need to come back. We've got a couple of other things on the calendar. But um, at this point, um, I think that we've, we've done our work. We've got several things going on. There's some meetings of senators that are going to happen here uh, a little bit later to talk about some other important issues that we've got coming up. So um, 
With that, I want to thank the members for all their diligence today. Military legislation, I think, is one of the most important things that we do in this body. And Governor, I want to thank you for your leadership in regards to what goes on with military issues in Alabama. We've come a long way from where we were to where we are, and it's being recognized nationally. And uh, your leadership has been a great part of that. And I think you've helped the legislature move in a positive direction to make Alabama be as you said earlier today, number two on the list of places for military families and for the Department of Defense to recognize all of the great things that we've done, nearly 30 pieces of legislation over the last several sessions. And um, it's to, you're to be commended for your leadership and the body is to be commended for focusing on this very important issue. So with that, Mr. President, I'm going to make a motion that we stand adjourned until 10 a.m. on Thursday, April 4th. Um, Mr. Pro Tem, one thing I got to say. Yes, so uh, West Kitchens yesterday, or I guess on Sunday when I was leaving church, asked me if I'd wear a Alabama tie since they made the Final Four. So just to show in good spirit, congratulations Thank to Alabama. Thank you, Mr. So, Roll Tide. I love yeah, it. I'm not going to say that. Uh, all right. Y'all heard the uh, motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? We stand adjourned.